Also, ladies and gentlemen, ahead of us, you see the Y9 mountain range. This is where the first wave came across. Slightly on our starboard side, ahead of us, you see two identical buildings. Behind the building, you see two separate mountains, the forward and the aft mountain. In between those mountains is called the Kole Kole Pass. If you guys have seen the movie Pearl Harbor, it is where the Japanese forces flew very low to the valley. There is no historical evidence to support the story, but it has been an enduring myth of Pearl Harbor. The Ford Island. Its Hawaiian name is Moko Ume Ume. Translates to Island of Attraction. Ford Island is named after Dr. Seth Ford. He was a Boston-based physician. He moved to the island in mid-1800s. He received the island as a wedding gift from marrying a royal monarch family. When Dr. Seth Ford passed away, his son, Seth Ford Jr., inherited the island and then sold it to a sugar cane company. In 1913, the U.S. Army bought it and established Duke Airfield. In 1931, the Navy took over and established Fort Island Naval Air Station. If you look closely under the pier, you see concrete blocks called mooring quakes, Porky's mooring quakes, used for ships to die up to. The USS Detroit, which escaped the damage, and the USS Raleigh, which were severely damaged, were born here during the attack of Pearl Harbor. And also, if one of our carrier, carriers, the USS Lexington and the USS Enterprise, had been in port that day, they would have been born in this pier. The USS Utah Memorial is also known as the Forgotten Memorial. Since Fort Island is still an active military base, it is not open to the public. The Utah Memorial, Utah's memorial was established in 1972 as a result of Utah Senator Senator Moss, who actively campaigned to build a memorial to the 58 men who lost their lives when the ship capsized in the early moments of the attack. Ladies and gentlemen, on our port side is the USS Utah and the USS Utah Memorial. The USS Utah is lying in approximately 35 feet of water on her port side. She was struck by two torpedoes that damaged the hull below the water line, rapidly filled with water, causing her to capsize. Today, you see the Utah partially righted due to failed salvage operation in July of 1944. Still see an evidence of snap cable. Out of 450 crewmen on board Utah, 58 sailors lost their lives. 54 sailors are still at tomb within the ship. There's also a baby girl at tomb within the ship. Chief Yeoman Albert T.D. Wagner had the ashes of one of his twin daughter, Nancy Lynn, and his daughter on that fateful day. He was waiting for the Utah to go out on maneuvers so that he could scatter her ashes to the sea. The baby girl's ashes went down with the Utah that tragic morning. David type divers tried to retrieve the urn, but the ship was severely damaged. Therefore, we'd like to say there's a baby girl on board Utah being guarded by 54 of Navy's finest. Ladies and gentlemen, looking off to your starboard side, see the outer fringes of the old naval hospital quarters, and visible is a flagpole and a marker that commemorates a gallant run for open sea made by the USS Nevada. The memorial commemorates those officers and sailors that lost their lives on board the Nevada, and honors two men that received the Medal of Honor, Chief Warrant Officer Ed Edwin J. Hill and Machinist Donald K. Ross. Additionally, 14 members of the crew received the Navy Cross for their heroic actions. Ladies and gentlemen, looking off to the port side, you see these concrete blocks that are painted in black and white? These are boring keys. These are not memorials. It was placed here in the mid-1930s to tie up the greatest battleship of the Pacific Fleet. This impressive anchorage is known as the Battleship Road. If you guys can here looking at the port side, you see a boring key that has a USS California logo. It is just a reference point for the beginning of the battleship and the morning of the attack. Ladies and gentlemen, ahead of us, you see the USS Missouri, also known as the Mighty Mo. First in the rest were the mooring sites of the battleship USS Oklahoma and USS Maryland. They look at the port side and up on it. That's where they do chains of command and also various military functions. And if we keep cutting the kind of port side, just like about now, you see a dent on the side of the ship. 
of the left of the ladder. This is a due to Kamikaze pilot attack in April 11 of 1945. And if you guys can be looking at your port side at the O1 level, and the forward awning is where the signing of instrument of surrender took place. They have two copies on board, one in English and the other one in Japanese. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be arriving to our next memorial shortly, the USS Arizona Memorial. Thank you. 